Tide pools are a really fun thing to go out and look at on vacation and they happen when the moon and the sun tug on the water and pull it up and away from where all these little critters are living. But tide pools are also home to one of the biggest colonies of hermaphrodites in the entire world. <laughs> Some of the most common inhabitants of Pacific tide pools are anemones. You may remember them from the 2003 Disney movie Finding Nemo when the father Marlin tells his son Nemo to go brush himself in the anemone. Anemone have hollow sack bodies with tiny tentacles at one end that reach out and trap and eat food. Yes, I said eat. Anemone are not plants, they are animals. Those tentacles are for trapping and devouring the babies and unsuspecting little creatures of the ocean. But don't worry. Our little Nemo is safe. Anemones are friends, not carnivores, at least not to the clownfish. Anemone have symbiotic relationships with clownfish, which means they both get something from each other, something better than, say, the anemone eating clownfish. For instance, the clownfish get a home from the anemone, and the anemone get to eat all the little organisms that live on the back of the clownfish. Clownfish are naturally hermaphrodites and exist in matriarchal societies, meaning the women are in charge. But in clownfish societies, there is one woman followed by a host of men, but only one man, the alpha male, gets to mate with the female. Once the female dies, well, it's the alpha male's turn to man up, or woman up, really, and he becomes the next woman of the group, just magically transformed. Clownfish aren't necessarily hermaphroditic, they are, but they're a specific branch of hermaphrodites that are described as being anthropomorphoditic, which means they become whatever sex they need to be depending on the time period. It's pretty crazy. All 26 species of clownfish are anthropomorphodidic, but only 10 out of about a thousand species of anemone actually want to let them live inside of them. 10 out of a thousand. Sounds about like how many of my math professors I've gotten along with. Most clownfish actually live in the Pacific and Indian Oceans closer to India and Australia, which is why there are no clownfish in my video. I'm filming in the States, so no clownfish here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a load of barnacles. I heard that! Barnacles! They're small crustaceans like crabs and shrimp, little animals with small shells. And without close observation, they may not even appear to be alive. You might think they're a rock or some sort of weird looking oyster plant, but they actually are animals. If you look closely, little tiny feathery legs are sweeping through the air. And there are 750 different kinds of barnacles in the world. Of barnacles! The little things that attach to whales on the underside of ships and to the sides of rocks inside of tide pools. And 23 of those species can be found in the Pacific Northwest where I am today. Sea stars are little spiny skin creatures that walk around with little suction cup feet, but they walk around really, really slowly. They mostly live in shallow sea waters, which includes tide pools and live completely off of eating clams, oysters, and other shelled things. Mostly things that aren't fast enough to ever run away from them. In order to eat these really slow shelled things, they have to wrap around, squeeze, and then excrete a toxin into the animal, eventually paralyzing it so they can rip it open and eat it completely. To imagine this, it'd be sort of like having a giant lump of muscular clay lay on top of you, squeeze you to death, peel off your skin, and squirt citric acid all over you until you eventually die, and then it would eat you. Yeah, I know, it's pretty morbid, and that's the reason why sea stars are actually considered Pretty intense hunters for the tide pools. Yes, these little sad, slowly moving things are considered hunters because they track down and kill things, even if it is extremely slowly. <laughs> Okay, anyways. Then. Crabs are also one of the great hunters of tide pools, and you might actually expect that as opposed to the sea star, and are also crustaceans like barnacles, lobsters, and shrimp. Crustacean is Greek for the crusty one, which if you've ever seen SpongeBob explains the crusty crab. And seriously, you should have heard me laughing when I read this. I was like, oh my god, that makes so much sense. There are more than 26,000 different kinds of crabs in the world, ranging from anywhere from 12 foot leg spans to little tiny microscopic crabs, some of which are actually known to be biologically immortal, which means unless they find their way into a shark's belly or onto our dinner plate, they aren't gonna die. But there is one who strikes fear into the crab's heart above all others. The seagull. Though technically not actually part of the tide pools, they are part of the ecosystem and descend like giant UFOs onto their unsuspecting prey beneath them. 
and they can be absolutely terrifying. You think you think I'm kidding? No, seriously, look at this crab. And and this one. Tide pools are full of amazing and intricate life, plants that look like animals, animals that look like plants, and feathered UFOs that bring death to everything that they touch. Seriously, they may look sweet, but don't let that face fool you. They are cold-blooded killers. Thank you so much for watching today's episode on Tide Pools, and make sure to check us out next week when we transition from the Hunters of the Sea to the Hunters of Land of about 10,000 BCE, when we're going to be doing an experiment on some of the technologies that ancient peoples used to hunt and see if we can't create something just as simple, but a little bit more effective than they do. And if not, we're going to have a great time throwing some spears around, shooting some arrows. If you like this video, go ahead and like and share. If you want to see more, check us out next week, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any suggestions for different builds or topics we can discuss in the future, go ahead and talk about them in the comment section below. We would love to do them and we'll get back to you like instantly. Seriously, I have nothing else to do except, you know, film starfish and read your comments. So yeah, chat it up down there.